Hey Zenithians, Tanvarian here, with a professional dive on what I believe is the most powerful healing class in the game, the Blademaster Support. With this class pushed to its near maximum potential, the heals per second are so much greater than any numbers I've yet to pull with the Essence Mage Support. In this dive, I'll be going over the different Godstone setups, we'll talk about a full healing Godstone setup, and a damage-focused Godstone setup. We'll talk about Rage Regeneration, and at the end, I'll show you how to put it all together. Before we get into the meat of the guide, I'll show off some footage of what you'll be capable of with applying this knowledge. Here, I'm putting myself in a situation where healing is crucial. The Essence Mage tank, Ree, is learning how to dodge the world boss. You'll see her take many hits to her whopping 8,000 plus health. And if played right, healing over 8,000 health in a small amount of time is very possible. This is something that Essence Mage supports in their current state would struggle to top off. Not only are Blade Master supports incredible healers, they can also be built for insane AoE damage. This becomes useful when swarm kiting for power leveling yourself, or just farming drops. The footage in the background shows how quickly giant packs of monsters just melt, even with mob level being the same or higher than our own. Before you watch this video, it's imperative that you understand and can apply all the overarching Blade Master mechanics that I showcase in my past video. You'll see a link to it in the upper right corner of your screen. So please, watch this first if you haven't already, and come back to continue the guide. First, let's go over the Godstone selections and their major and minor upgrades. For the dash, we want Protector's Vow. The skill has an incredibly short cooldown of 5 seconds and grants a shield in a 6 meter radius from the dash's end location. This dash will grant the exact amount of AP you currently have as shield to yourself and others. Since this ability has 2 charges, you can stand in place and cast it twice instantly for double the shield value. It's important you use this ability often if you need to buy yourself some time before or after a hit landed on yourself or your tank. Remember, the dash's shield only lasts for 6 seconds before it drops off. This makes your timing crucial for applying the shield at opportune times. For the major upgrade, Saint is a great pick. Saint will add a heal over time to the shield that is incredibly useful. Unfortunately, the heal does not work on yourself, only on your allies. If the unique major for this godstone worked, I'd recommend it for the extra 50% AP as shield buff, though it currently does not function. For the miners, cooldown reduction is an absolute must. Take power scaling if you don't have cooldown reduction yet. Next, we'll go over the downward cadence. Celestial Strike is the pick here, but it has some problems that need to be understood. The ability claims to heal the lowest health ally within 6 meters for a decent amount, though it's looking at the total health, not the percentage of health missing. What this means is, a tank at 50% health, let's say that's about 4500 HP, still likely has more health than a DPS or support at 100% health, which would be about 4000 HP. So, when this ability triggers, it's still figuring that the 4000 is lower than the 4500. So the heal goes to the full health DPS or support character rather than the tank that's missing half of its health. Knowing this, it's a great self-heal when combined with 
the Blood Blade Power Strike. A good major for this is Dyad, for the extra AP boost for other heal procs. We would go with the unique major for this ability that adds a heal over time on top of this, though sadly it does not work properly at this time. For the miners, take power scaling for bigger damage and healing. Next we'll go over the horizontal cadence. This choice will likely shock you, though allow me to explain. We want to choose Cleave over Holy Fire. Through rigorous testing, I found the Holy Fire's one rage per tick on the dot is not currently working. On top of this, the unique major that ups the rage to two per tick is also not working. The only part that does work for Holy Fire are the initial 5 rage on activation, and the damage dealt over time. In the footage in the background, you'll see that you're actually able to deal more damage and regenerate more rage with Cleave, as Cleave will generate rage per target struck. Holy Fire is not giving rage per target struck just that initial 5 on activation. It's possible that Holy Fire may generate a tiny bit more rage on single target fights, though it's likely to be around the same compared to Cleave, and at a loss of a bit of damage. For the Major on Cleave, take Dyad for the extra AP boost. For the Minor, take power scaling for even more damage. Next, for our downwards power strike, Blood Blade is our choice. The Blademaster Support Toolkit does not come with many strong self-healing abilities. In the cases where we find ourselves extremely low on HP, one or two Blood Blades will fill our entire health pool. This ability is literally a lifesaver, and the strongest self-heal that you can pull off. While activating Blood Blade, you'll likely also get a Celestial Strike Cadence off, adding even more self-healing to this. This ability will save you from many, many deaths. For the Major, Dyad is an excellent choice for the extra AP buff for future self heals and damage. For the miners, prioritize power scaling for even more healing and damage from this ability. Next, for the horizontal power strike, we want Divine Blade if our priority is healing a group. Divine Blade is our most powerful heal. It heals for a whopping 160% AP on the first target hit with the beam, then 80% AP for all targets hit afterwards. As support, we have an incredibly larger mana pool due to our primary stat being Affinity, and this allows us to spam cast Divine Blade up to 5-7 to seven times before running out of rage at 40. Always cast Divine Blade if you need to quickly fill up missing health bars. For the Major, Inspiration will be the best pick. Inspiration will recover 50% of our entire Rage Pool over 10 seconds with a 30 second cooldown. At level 40, you should have close to 100 Rage. So, we're getting about 50 raids just from casting this ability if the cooldown is up. While the unique major would be nice to pick up, it's incredibly important that we have inspiration to help keep our rage pool topped off. For the minor, I recommend power scaling for a larger heal. You could also take resource cost reduction. Next, for the weapon throw, will be taking Consecration. This offers a large 60% AP heal instantly on impact, then continues to trickle heal for 15% AP every second for 12 seconds. 
An important thing to remember about this heal is that it's free. It doesn't cost any rage to cast. So if someone needs a tiny bit of healing, always throw this if cooldown is up. Unfortunately, this godstone does not get any major or minor upgrades, so we'll be moving forward. Next up is the ultimate, Amara's Radiance. This ultimate is another huge lifesaver. While the description does not explain this, your ultimate will regenerate mana or rage for everyone within a 6 meter radius, including yourself. The total rage or mana regenerated is so much that it nearly tops everyone's resource pool. Knowing this, use your ultimate when you've burnt through all of your rage and can no longer cast heals. It will instantly top you off and allow you to continue your healing duties. On top of all of this, your ult will also boost AP and movement speed of yourself and the four nearest allies within 6 meters by 20% for 12 seconds. You will also pulse every 3 seconds, debuffing enemies hit by the pulse so that their stagger bar builds 20% faster. For the major, take inspiration for even more rage regeneration. For the minor, cooldown reduction is of utmost importance. Next up is the Master Strike. For the Master Strike, we have Demon Purge. Demon Purge is an absolute blender for large packs of mobs. This ability does 200% AP damage to all enemies within a 6 meter radius. When charging both blades with this, you can pull out a whopping 400% AP damage as an AoE, melting mobs in the affected area. On top of this, if you ensure both your master strikes are activated with a horizontal strike, you'll also be triggering two arm breakers on top of the master strike's damage. This equates to 760% AP damage done all at once in a huge radius. This 760% AP damage doesn't even include your base melee strike and likely cadence triggers, driving the damage even higher. This ability is so important to be used as often as possible when you're swarm kiting to power level yourself or while you're farming drops. For the major, Go with Dyad for the extra AP% percent buff, making this entire combo hit for even higher damage. For the Miner, take Power Scaling to push this damage even higher. Now that we've gone over all the Godstones, we'll move on to talking about the healing-focused Godstone setup. All of the Godstones I just recommended are exactly the healing Godstone setup. With these, your healing potential should be at its near max. This setup is ideal for main healing. Let's move on to our damage focused Godstone setup. The only edits to Godstones are going to be on our Horizontal Power Strike. Take Arm Breaker instead of Divine Blade, as the raw damage and AoE this ability provides incredibly increases your damage potential. For the Major on Arm Breaker, take Dyad to boost your damage combos even higher. For Miners, take Power Scaling for even more raw damage. Ensure that you're activating Master Strike each time you trigger Arm Breaker to maximize your damage output. This is one of the rare cases where waiting for Master Strike is incredibly important. Now that we've gone over the healing and damage setup, let's move on to Rage Regeneration. Good Rage Regeneration is what will set apart the Exemplary Healers 
from the standards. Use your ultimate when you find yourself completely out of range, filling it near instantly. The inspiration majors are incredibly important to keep rage topped off. So take this anywhere you can, like we did on Divine Blade and our ultimate. I had hoped Inspiration would drop on Protector's Vow, Celestial Strike, and the Master Strike, though after countless hours of farming Godstones, I've yet to see these. If you happen to find them, I highly recommend stacking as many Inspiration Majors as you can, as Rage equals even more healing. Also. Each Inspiration Major has its own unique cooldown, allowing you to cycle through different abilities that have Inspiration and keep the buff up without having to wait for the previous Inspiration's 30 second cooldown. Now let's move on to putting all this information together in an applicable technique. First, we'll start off with the Healing Focus build. One of the biggest techniques that set aside the great healers from the poor are the healer's focus. As a main healer, you should be staring at allies' health bars. Do not make the mistake of a poor healer by focusing on damaging monsters. Since healers are reactive players, there's no real set rotation to go off of. So rather than explaining a rotation like I have before, I'll go over all the different situations that would call for particular actions. As long as it doesn't put you in mortal danger, you should always be dashing on top of your tank to provide a shield buffer. With such a short cooldown, you'll be dashing incredibly often, giving around 2k shield per dash. Your weapon throw as well should always be on cooldown. Throw it on top of anyone who needs a smaller heal, or a constant flow of healing on top of your tank. The Divine Blade Power Strike, our biggest heal, should only be cast when our main tank takes a hit that eats 25% of their entire health bar. If the hit is larger than that, cast Divine Blade back to back with both hands to top off your ally. Also, remember that casting Divine Blade will also trigger Inspiration giving us around 50 rage at level 40. Activate Cleave on large packs of mob to trickle in even more rage. And when rage is getting dangerously low, activate your ultimate to top back up. When you find yourself needing a huge heal, cast Blood Blade, which will also activate Celestial Strikes Cadence for a huge self heal. Lastly, we'll talk about the damage-focused build, ideal for leveling or farming. Whether you're fighting a small or large pack of monsters, you should always keep your shield up with your dash. Dash constantly. Make sure it's always on cooldown. This will help you soak a ton of damage without needing to spend rage on healing. On top of this, always cast your healing weapon throw wherever you are fighting. When you start damaging the pack, open with two arm breakers with both swords, keep those triggers held, and wait for the Master Strike to charge. As soon as Master Strike is up, blow both of them horizontally, triggering both the Master Strikes and additional arm breakers for insane AoE damage. You will absolutely melt huge packs of monsters with this damage combo. If you find yourself in a low health situation, cast Blood Blades Power Strike to quickly fill your health pool. And with that, we've come to a close. In this guide, I went over the different Godstone setups. I talked about a full healing Godstone setup and a damage focused one. I went over rage regeneration and, at the end, showed you how to put it all together. Once again, I feel that Blademaster support is the most powerful healing class in the game. 
The heals per second are so much greater than any numbers I've yet to pull with the Essence Mage support. If you put all of these mechanics to good practice, you will be an incredible addition to any group. The heals that you will provide others will prevent countless deaths to your friends and groupmates, and you will get recognized. There are a rare number of healers out there who truly do their job well. Be one of them. Put in effort, practice, and you will shine. If you've found this guide useful and want to give back in some way, give the video a like as it helps the video show up for others who are interested in Zenith content. If you want to see all these mechanics that I've shown today in action and want to offer even more support to myself, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Tanvarian, which will be in the description as well, where I solo unheard of endgame content and show off what anyone is capable of if you push your class to its limits. Thanks for watching, enjoy the rest of the day, and I'll see you later, Zenithians.